Now, Harry and Meghan's fairy tale of New York unraveled in light speed time last night, but the lamestream media were caught with their pants down when it came to scrutinising the facts. Yep, the likes of the British Bashing Corporation, Sly News, Woke ITV and Channel 5 all succumbed to the Sussex serialisation of their Manhattan taxi ride, despite their history of porcupines. Duke and Duchess of Sussex were involved in a near catastrophic car chase last night. This relentless pursuit lasting over two hours. And resulted in multiple near collisions. It clearly made them feel extremely uncomfortable. His biggest fear was history repeating itself. It lay the blame squarely at the hands of a highly aggressive paparazzi. But none of that was accurate. So let me bring in Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie now. Calvin... Shouldn't the media, given the track record that the Sussexes have of being compulsive liars, be fact-checking every word they say? Well, it's much easier for them just to accept what the establishment, and they are the establishment, despite the fact that they're 6,000 miles away, to accept it. They don't want to scrutinise it. They don't want the problem. They, I mean, Harry is an obsessive sewer these days. I see he's got five separate legal actions going on right now against various papers. And these, these companies, I mean, it's very interesting what ITV did. I mean, ITV have their own problems in their own backyard, and they know how convoluted battles are between people. So why don't they why don't they accept that there's more than one story to be told there? I mean, tonight it becomes clear. I, th I, I, I seriously wonder how well Harry is, apart from the fact he's obsessed about going through the courts and suing everybody. I see now that his people are now putting it out that they're very upset that King Charles, the father, has not reached out to him to find out how he is. I mean, it is absolute madness. The truth, the other aspect is the New York Times, which is no friend of the UK, actually has made clear that there has been an exaggeration of whatever happened that night. And when the New York Times says it, then, all right, I can understand them people raising their eyebrows at the New York Post, but the New York Times says it, then that is a significant issue. So the other aspect, which I found fascinating, is he was looking he was looking to be the victim. So he and Meghan stayed up all night to try and find out which media publication was going to publish those photos. But they wasted their time. Nobody did publish them in the end. So you can see what's going on in his mind. He is looking and she is looking, presumably, for a problem morning, noon and night. And they're prepared to say anything to grab a headline to try and make the media look bad. And all that's happened is that they have performed what you have been saying for years, what Piers Morgan's been saying for years, that they are either A, unwell, let's be generous, or B, they are simply incapable of telling the truth. Oh, it's the latter. Uh, especially in it's relation the latter, to the media. Calvin, let me tell you. But look, I, I, I want to move on to the other big scandal of the week, Calvin. This is Holly and Philip uh, at this morning. The drama has rumbled onto its eighth day now. Now, you'll remember the famous spin doctor, Alistair Campbell, worked by the 10-day rule, which said if the media was still covering a scandal 10 days after it first broke, then someone would have to go. Calvin, I see no sign of this story slowing down, especially seeing we're going to get the sentencing of Philip Schofield's paedophile brother tomorrow. Do you think ITV are close to accepting defeat and getting rid of him now to save the show? Well, let's put it this way. The real question is, why on earth have they let it even rumble on for eight days? You looked at your looked at look at this the, the videos of or look at the, the, the video of Philip Schofield. Honestly, he looks older than me. That cannot be possible. But but he looks he looks he look he looks dreadful. The toll is telling on him. The brother is going to get a very very handsome sentence. It could be anything between five, you know, three, five, or seven years. I mean, and and the truth about the matter is that, that unfortunately, and don't let's go into it all this, that the Philip knew about this prior to the councillor going to the police. He did nothing about it. I recognise he was in a difficult position, but he's got caught up in that as well. The, the reality is that, that Holly doesn't want to work with him anymore. He wants to hang on.
but surely there should be leadership at ITV. You wonder why ITV are doing so badly, why their share price is so low, why they can't hold on to difficult talent like Piers Morgan. Imagine if Piers had been in that position on this Morgan. He would have been out the door at 200 million miles oh, yeah. an hour. Big time. Right? So I cannot understand yeah. it. This morning will not survive if they don't take some kind of action. The audience is low, advertising is low. It's an important subject. That is a big number, a big audience number for ITV. They want they want that franchise to continue. So they have to do something. It's not difficult to do this. They've shown before when they don't like somebody, Jeremy Kyle, yeah. Piers, and God knows gone. who else, boom, you're they're gone. gone. Carol McGiffin now. Uh, very good point. Calvin McKenzie, thank you so much. I know you're not with us for the next couple of weeks. Have a brilliant holiday. We will miss you, but we'll see you when you're back. Uh, an important legal note, uh, Philip Schofield insists that he didn't know anything illegal was going on in terms of his paedophile brother.